Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In my previous video, I introduced you to Mini Tools Partition Wizard. Migrate the operating system to your new hard drive. You can copy partitions, you can edit partitions, and so forth. Well, I'm going to show you some of the new features that they added. The first one is being the disk benchmark. This feature is designed to measure storage performance using variable transfer sizes and test lengths for both sequential and random read or write speeds. With this hard drive benchmark tool, users can test any manufacturer's RAID controllers, storage controllers, hard drives, and solid state drives. Benchmarking has been a popular way to test disk speeds for years. It is a process of running software to measure the transfer speeds under various disk access scenarios like sequential and random, and then show results in megabytes per second to summarize the speed characteristics of the drive. A sequential read-write is a disk access pattern whereby large contiguous blocks of data are read from or written to adjacent locations on the, on the device. Random read and write is another disk access pattern whereby data is either read from or written to non-adjacent locations or random locations on the storage device. When you open Disk Benchmark, you're going to see several options that are available for users to customize the hard drive performance test. The first one you'll see is the Select a Drive. Now, this option here defaults to drive C, which is the primary drive on your computer. Now, some of you that have card readers and external hard drives, uh, if you click the list, you will also see other types of drives that may be connected to your computer that you can test. Whether it's a memory card, a USB hard drive, this will allow you to test any kind of drive. Over here, you have the physical disk. Uh, this is disk one, which identifies this as the primary drive C drive. Uh, Western Digital, uh, which is shown here by the abbreviation. Uh, this here is the model number. Uh, this is a model of the particular hard drive. Now you can look up these model numbers and it will give you some detailed specifications as to what the drive can do. Uh, this here is the connection that the drive has to the computer. Uh, this here is the SATA drive, which it indicates it's internal. Next, we have the transfer size. Now, the transfer size is the amount of data that's going to be sent on each queue. Now, you can choose from one kilobyte all the way up to two megabytes. Maximum is the maximum size of the data block that's going to be used in the test. Uh, again, you can choose anywhere between one kilobyte and two megabytes. Next, we have the total length. Now, this is the total length of the file, the size of the file that's going to be used. These will be determined how long it will take to write this total length of data. For instance, the first test here will show four kilobytes. So the first test will test four kilobyte blocks that will save data until it reaches 200 megabytes. This is how the test is performed. Now this can be chosen anywhere between 100 megabytes all the way up to four gigabytes. Q number is the next thing that you can choose. Now the Q depends on a bunch of asynchronous read writes to the drive. It's a queue. And think of it as a, a job. Now, depending on the drive that you have, most drives can either do 16 or 32, but some of them can go as high as 512. So you do want to get the model number and find out exactly what the drive is supposed to be able to do then that way you'll have a reference point when you do the test. Thread number sets up how many threads or processes that are used to perform the test. This mode is the type of test that we're going to perform. Now you can do sequential, you could do random, or you can do both. Cool out, the cooldown time 
is referring to how long to wait between tasks. Now, because of the test um, usage on the drive, the drive will tend to heat up. So this allows a period of cool down to allow the drive to rest and cool down before it performs the next test. Before we can do any kind of test, we need something to compare the test to. So we need to get the specifications of the hard drive that we're going to test. So up here, we're going to take this information here. This is the serial number of the drive, and we're going to do an online search. Now, according to my research, according and Western Digital, it shows that this is my model number that I have. This is the type of model that I have. Uh, I have a 500 gigabyte solid state drive in my computer. It also shows that the drive is a SATA 3, which is the third generation, that can reach up to 6 gigabits per second. Over here, we have the performance, and it also shows a footnote, which is number 4 on this case. Now, here in the parentheses, we see that they use 4 kilobyte blocks, and the queue depth was set to 32. Here we have the sequential read which was up to 560 gigabytes per second. The sequential write was up to 530 megabytes per second. Now, according to their footnote, it shows that they used a one gigabyte file size. And over here, it shows you the type of computer and the configuration that the computer had when the test was performed. According to the diagnostic, I was able to confirm the information. Now here, this is the Western Digital Dashboard, which allows me to keep track of the health of my hard drive. Now, as you can see, it does show the same serial number. You'll notice down here in the specifications that the drive is six gigabits per second, but the link is only at three gigabits per second. So with this information, we can assume that even though that the drive is six gigabits per second, that the maximum speed is only going to be at three. So the result should be somewhere close to half of what they specified. So let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to set the data transfer right size of four kilobytes. Uh, the maximum is also going to be set to four kilobytes. And we're going to set the file size or total length to one gigabyte. Now we're going to set the Q to 32. I'm going to leave the thread number to 4. And we want to leave the task mode to sequential. And we'll just leave the cooldown time to 5 seconds. So let's go ahead and begin the test. Here it's going to show you the percentage of the test. And then here you're going to see a bar graph of the test. Once the test is completed, you're going to see this window here, which shows a visual representation of the test results. On the left is the transfer size. Uh, we chose four kilobyte data blocks. Down here at the bottom is the megabytes per second. And you also see the legend that shows a color representation for different um, access. Uh, here was the first one that it tested was the sequential reading. Uh, this reached a maximum of 135.412 megabytes per second. Uh, if you were to take uh, one gigabyte and divide it by 135.142, it comes out at about uh, eight seconds. Now, if you were to take the sequential write to the drive, you'll see that it reached 146.892 megabytes per second. Now, if you take the one gigabyte file and divide it by 146.892, then you will get it roughly seven seconds for it to complete the task. Now, as you can see, this is almost less than half than what the predicted speed would be. Now, you have to take in consideration though, your computer is accessing data off and on throughout this whole entire test. So the test may not be entirely accurate. But this gives you a reference point as to what the drive can do. 
So let me show you another test, and this is a full range of a test. In this test, I made some changes to the test parameters. Here I changed the transfer size to minimum of one kilobyte data block and made the maximum to two megabytes of a data block to reach the total length of one gigabyte. Now I did not ch t change anything else, I uh, left everything else the same. And if you look at the results, you'll see a very interesting um, result. If you work at one kilobyte data blocks, you can see it takes a much longer time to transfer the data to reach one gigabyte. And as every time that the data block changes and increases, you'll see that the speed at which data can be transferred is increased. Here we have up to 64 kilobyte block of data to transfer to the drive for one gigabyte. As you can see, it starts to stabilize and reach its potential once it reaches anywhere between 64 and 128 kilobyte blocks. And then as you go higher, you'll see that it pretty much stabilizes. And of course, this is a maximum. And it shows that the maximum it's done was 244.547 megabytes per second. So as you can see, that's pretty fast. That's almost reaching the speed at which the host controller can reach at three gigabits per second. Now, if you take three gigabits per second, that's roughly 375 megabytes per second. Uh, if you have a six gigabit system, then this will allow it to reach up to 750 megabytes per second. So as you can see here, uh, this is very close to what I would be expecting for my hard drive. Now that we have a better understanding of how this tool can help determine the transfer speed of your hard drive and its efficiency, what if I told you that the information on here is not entirely accurate. Would you be surprised? Well, rest assured it's not the program. It's your computer. It uses a mechanism called disk cache. Now this helps to improve the time that it takes to read data from and write to the hard drive. Now it stores a lot of the information, things it's going to write to the drive and things it's going to read from the drive. And what this does is it helps to improve the performance because memory, which is your system memory, your random access memory, can be accessing data at a much faster rate than a solid state drive or even a, the fastest hard drive. So this cache is used to help speed up the process. Now all this is controlled by the host controller. Uh, for instance, this computer here uses the SATA connection to the hard drive, which goes through the SATA's host controller. Now, the software here is not at fault because the software only sends a command to the host controller to tell the host controller what it's doing, what it needs. The host controller takes care of the rest and communicates to the hard drive. Well, what happens is the software cannot differ differentiate where the data is coming from. All it knows is it's coming from the host controller. The host controller could be accessing the random access memory for the, from the disk cache, or it could be accessing the data from the hard drive. So in retrospect, it really doesn't know where that data is coming from. All it knows is how fast that the data is being transferred. That's all it knows. So how can you really get an accurate reading as to how fast the disk is performing? Well, let me show you. If you go into control panel, uh, you can go, you'll need to go into device manager. When device manager pops up, you'll see these categories. And the one we're looking for is this one, this drives. Now this one shows all the disk drives that's hooked up to your computer. 
And the one I'm looking for is this one here. You'll notice the same model number or the same serial number that we saw earlier. So we'll just open it up and you're going to see this properties. Now, of course, everything does show that it's working properly. But what we want is this tab here is called policies. When you click on it, you'll notice here where it says enable write, write caching on the device. So what we want to do is we want to turn it off. And what this will do is force the computer or the operating system to no longer use the caching. So this way we work directly with the hard drive. Now, once you have it turned off, just click OK. Now, I'm going to leave this test up and we're going to do the exact same test, but now it's going to be a little different. So let me go ahead and click start. Now, this test that we just did has been completed. Have you noticed anything different? No? Well, look down here at the bottom. Uh, this is the first test that we did was the one kilobyte. Now, look at the previous test that we did. Noticed anything different? This is the first test. This is the second test. Before, after. Noticed anything different? With disk caching out of the picture, you'll notice that a lot, some of the speeds have changed, especially the write segments. Uh, they have significantly decreased. As before, when caching was turned off, you can see that the data write was a lot faster. This is because the computer was reading and writing from the memory, not the drive. Now, if you do the new test, you'll notice that it takes longer for the data to write to the drive than it does to read it. And as you can go up, you'll notice that all the scores have changed. And you'll see that writing is significantly lower than the reading. And that is because the computer uses the memory to cache some data before it's written to the compute to the drive. And this is why you'll see a significant difference. Now let's go all the way to the top of the list here. Uh, here was the last list at two megabyte uh, blocks of data. Uh, in this test, it was able to read at 241 and 240 uh, megabytes per second. And it could only write 164 and 172 megabytes per second. Well, in the original test, you can see they're way up here at the top. The reading really hasn't changed a whole lot, but the writing has. So if you really want an accurate test to see how well your drive can perform, you can always go in there and choose turn off the write caching for the device, and this will give you a very good accurate of the computer or the hard drive's ability to read and write data. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.